First question came from my guy Dominique, who a new Team Keep It Clean patron. So appreciate you, man. He said, "What's up, man?" First question as a patron member. Uh, so I just got done watching a video on the Deshaun Jackson visit and Robbie Anderson going to the Cardinals. Uh, I've been thinking about how much does the offensive scheme have to do with why we don't get that big name weapon? I, I think over time that has that has definitely had a lot to do with it because the Ravens just over time they have just simply haven't valued the wide receiver position like that. Um, this is not something that just happened overnight. It's been like this for a long time. Uh, so I think a lot of people, a lot of players probably look at that and they're like, I don't know about going, all there, uh, going there. And then on top of that, like when if, if your scheme does not really value the wide receivers like that, um, the it's not just the scheme, it's the pay too. So Ravens would have to really, if they wanted to get a receiver like that, they would have to cough up that bread. They're not a team that does that when it comes to the wide receiver position. So that's another thing, too. But anyway, he said, are the young guys we have at receiver just not that good? Or is it that they are not getting out there enough? That's another part of it, too. Um, you see, uh, we see Bateman when he was when he was healthy. Hopefully he can be healthy real, real soon again. We see Bateman out there a uh, significant amount of time. Um, but he could be out there a lot more and be involved a lot more. We see Duvernay out there a lot, and Duvernay, like, he turning into to Devin do it all Vinay. Well, he was in the Bengals game, and in the Giants game, it was quiet. It's like they didn't even use him like that. Like, even, not even just as a receiver, but just use him, period. Like, as a running back, as just they, they didn't do that. But anyway, um, so you, 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 but then you see, you see such a drastic drop off. Uh, and then, oh, there's Demarcus Robinson, too, and he's been getting more playing time now with uh, Rashad Bateman out. Um, but there's such a big drop off from the top two to the bottom two. And nobody's expecting that the top two receivers are going to have the same, uh, snap count as the bottom two. Um, but when you look at, uh, the Rashad Bateman, the Devin Duvernay or Devin Duvernay and Demarcus Robinson versus Prochet and Tylen Wallace, it's like, man, and, and Ravens have done this thing over so many years, so many wide receivers to where, they don't get used, and we're over here scratching our heads, just wondering, like, man, were they really? Are they really? Was it that they were that bad, or is it that they just didn't have the opportunity? Now, like I've still said before, I do not think that this was the year to where it's like, all right, we should start really trying to develop our receivers now. No, this was Lamar's. It's supposed to be his prove it again year because he's already proven it. He's already proven it, but this is supposed to be his prove it again year. This is supposed to be his contract year, so wouldn't you want to equip him with the best of the best? But anyway, another conversation. Um, he said, it kills me when we have receivers sitting on the bench the whole game and we could use them. Um, yeah, and I mean, I know with Pat Ricard. Pat Ricard has been a subject of a lot of conversation, and I can understand why when you look at the snap count, you look at my, like, man, Pat Ricard is out there a lot. And every time Pat Ricard is out there, it takes away one weapon, one more weapon that could be out there, one more option. Um, but I know Pat Ricard, he's been out there a lot early on in the season, especially before Ronnie Stanley came back as an extra pass blocker. And he has continued to be out there as an extra pass blocker to just provide that much more protection uh, for Lamar Jackson and, and help out in the run game uh, as well. And then sometimes he'll, he'll go out for little passes here and there too. Um, so that, that's a tricky situation right there. That's a real tricky situation because he does help. Again, he helps as an, as an extra blocker, but at the same time, he takes away uh, from somebody else. So it's all about that, 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 that give and take. Uh, he said, so my question is, do you think it is the scheme, the talent, or a deeper issue other than philosophy? I mean, it's, it's, it's the philosophy. Philo and philosophy literally covers all of that because the philosophy has to do with all of that. The philosophy on how the Ravens move at the receiver position, the philosophy on how they just they have not gotten the most out of most of their wide receivers. Like most of the receivers that the Ravens drafted, we don't have a clue how good or how bad they really are. Like with, with Torrey Smith, they knew about him. With Hollywood, they knew about him. So they, they, they've got to really find out what they were good at, what they were bad at. And even still, I don't even feel like they were all, all maximized to the fullest. But they, they were used a lot. They were, uh, we, they, Ravens really tested those two as wide receivers. But so many other guys that the Ravens have drafted over the years, they haven't been. They haven't been. So it's, it's a philosophy thing. Um, and he said, also, with the trade deadline in about two weeks, 
What are some players on the team that could be dealt? Ooh, that that's a question. I, I you know, I did not think about that before. Only person I thought about that was with uh, Nick Boyle, possibly, but I don't. I'm not sure exactly how his contract is. But the way that he just hasn't been out there, I I, I could see him maybe. But other than that, mm, who could be dealt? Maybe one of their running backs, not J.K. Dobbins, but maybe Mike Davis. Uh, yeah, maybe Mike Davis. Um, as far as maybe receivers, because they maybe Tyler Wallace or Proche. Maybe because um, they've got to be frustrated, man. And again, it's it's not with with, with the receivers. There's there's blame that's that's to be placed on Lamar as well, because there's been times when Lamar has just straight up missed. He just straight up missed. Whether it's an overthrow, whether it's a missed opportunity, where he might not have even seen a receiver come open. Lamar deserves his share to blame as well. Um, but with, with Proche and with Tylen Wallace, um, you, you got to feel like, especially them, they, they got to be looking at the Ravens situation like, man, we're here, got drafted to this team, been on the team a couple years, um, more so Proche. I know this Tylen Wallace, Tylen Wallace second year. And they got to be looking at their snap count, looking at the lack of opportunity and be like, man, I don't know if it's ever going to happen here. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. And then you look at the way that the Ravens move because they had a Bateman, they had a Proche, they had a Tylen Wallace, they had a Devin DuVernay. Went out, got Demarcus Robinson. Went out, just got Deshaun Jackson. Went out and got Andy Isabella. So they went out and got some other guys at the receiver position before they even really pushed you like that. And by the way that the Ravens have been moving – I wouldn't expect them, and I don't even think a Proche or Tylen Wallace would expect the Ravens to even give them a, a, a push like that uh, to get more playing time. So if I, I could see them, I could actually see them requesting to be traded, but um, I, I, I could see them possibly being being candidates to possibly be dealt. Um, I'm not sure what the Ravens would get for them. Um, or had, but it, I think anything is possible really at this point. Next question came from another patron, my guy, show enough Q. He said, isn't it funny how Lamar posts Twitter videos each summer training with Antonio Brown and Robbie Anderson, but the Ravens front office never entertained them. Antonio showed interest in joining Lamar in Hollywood back in 2020 and 2021, and then goes on to win a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. Robbie is traded to Arizona due to an injured Hollywood Brown. Can the Ravens quit staffing the Ravens senior center, uh, retirement home with old vets and finally give Lamar a stub while? receiver he is only the top five Q qb that has never had the opportunity to throw to a stud wide receiver in his prime i hope we trade for calvin really next season again back to the first question philosophy man it's the philosophy it's raven's philosophy and it's just a philosophy that's just it needs to be updated big time next question came from another patron my guy jl he said every dollar counts but Who's counting? Uh, after the game Sunday, I'm seeing the Ravens fan base in complete shambles while partaking in the blame game. I hear fire Greg Roman. I hear fire Harbaugh. I hear people completely blaming Lamar. But one name I have yet to hear is GM Mr. Eric DaCosta. Oh, wait, wait, where you been at? Because I, I done heard that a lot from people. A whole lot from people. So you, you, you must have just completely missed that side of the argument. But um, I, I've been hearing that a lot. But anyway, he said, there's no way to to say this nicely but after some evaluation on my end i'm really starting to think that eric DaCosta doesn't have a plan or theme for this roster no premier edge rushers no premier receivers uh you've yet to sign lamar jackson long term you signed marcus williams for 70 mil then draft kyle hamilton at 14 you never replaced hollywood and, and instead drafted two tight ends uh you drafted a punter in the fourth round and i don't think you want to know the players that were passed on by Eric DaCosta. Uh, every dollar counts because the organization is penny pinching. The Ravens front office don't want to win. They want to win on a budget. Eric DaCosta is not the guy. We need someone who is willing to actually build around their quarterback. You know, like literally every other GM in the league. This topic is so frustrating, Raven. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it is frustrating just watching how the Ravens just haven't really built around Lamar like that. Uh, we said it the other day in the video how if, if you're going to question Lamar, if you're going to be like, oh, well, I don't know if he can make these throws. I don't know if he can do this. I don't know if he can do that. We question this. We question that. Why not provide him answers? Why, why not give him absolutely no excuses uh, to, to, to why he shouldn't be producing? Why, why not really, really, really go in for him? And they've had chances, too. Again, Lamar contract has been cheap. It's been cheap. And, and again, this is the cheapest that it's, it's ever going to get. 
This is the cheapest that it's ever gonna get. It ain't never gonna get no cheaper than this. This twenty three mil, whatever it is right now. In the previous years, it was way cheaper. You could you could have done so much more. But as far as what you were just talking about, as far as the um the direction, uh, the direction of the the team, and because you said it seems like he doesn't have a uh, a theme for the team. It's like oof. That's um that's something right there because again the, you mentioned the safeties he paid Marcus Williams seventy mil then end up and kept they kept Chuck Clark and they brought back Geno Stone at the time they still had Tony Jefferson uh, they still had Ardarius Washington still had Brandon Stevens and they still went and drafted Kyle Hamilton at fourteen and he ain't even been out there too much um the 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 lack of a premier edge rusher premier guy and i know they they really wanted adafi away to turn the corner so i'm thinking they probably were hoping like all right in the second year he gonna do his thing because he showed some nice flashes in the first year um and it's been up and down for adafi away so far and i'm sure they're hoping that bowser may be back but i'm sure they weren't completely counting on him to be back early on in the season um ajabo we'll see what happens with him uh but yeah wide receiver we done talked about that a, a lot um so yeah, man, this uh, this team is, is is the team is a team though. I think the theme, especially on offense, uh, has been to build for Greg Roman. It's to build for Greg Roman because, like you said, they they double down on tight end. They have five tight ends. They they traded Hollywood away, and literally did nothing to replace him at all. And then finally, they oh they bring in Demarcus Robinson. And now and it's like we've been talking about the issue um, at the receiver position for the longest. But then they, they come in. Oh, at, uh, going into week seven, we'll sign Deshaun Jackson. Going into week six, we'll sign Andy Isabella. It's like Ravens like, what's going on? Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from subs and let's get into the next question from my guy lafonso he said let's call a spade a spade what's going on engraving man it's been a minute since i sent in a question first and foremost i want to say congrats on the channel growing to where it's at and thank you for being a positive pillar not only in the black community but the sports community as well and i appreciate that lafonso thank you man he said you might not see it but truly man you help a lot uh, but on to why i'm messaging you at 4 a.m lol Negligence and pride. That's all I have seen from this team in the last four to five years. Sorry in advance, this is going to be long. And I'm looking at it and it is, wow. This, uh, this may be the last question on this episode. Oh, this is a long one. Uh, he said, um, we, have, we have had a receiver problem for almost 30 years now. Now, without diving into that, let's get to more recent. This organization prides itself on cutting edge and analytics, looking at the history of something, making a change to create a different outcome. Tendency breakers, you know, things of that nature. If that's the case, why is Greg Roman employed for more than two years? His personal uh, analytics would tell you he doesn't scheme for receivers. He stunts your QB after two years, and he isn't beneficial for a balanced offense. Analytics would tell you that firing your DC after all those injuries was the wrong move and, and having the most electric QB in the world with Stale offense isn't the QB's fault or even the backup QB's. It's the weapons in the scheme. We drafted Hollywood to mimic the Chiefs' offense, a speedy guy, elite tight end, but we didn't try to mimic the offensive philosophy. It didn't pan out. We watched so many young QB's who hadn't done anything remotely close to what Lamar has done get receivers to develop their game. It's, it's done. The question is done. I mean, I mean, you ain't even asked a question yet, but it's done after that statement. We've seen it. We've seen it so many times. Like... I hate, we got, we got to go down the list again, but we've seen it so many times. Like, specifically, look at Jalen Hurts right now. Jalen Hurts, I think it was his first playoff game, but it, whatever it was, it was, a, it was a playoff game against the Bucks. or he looked awful. He, he looked so bad. What did the Eagles do? Well, the Eagles, like, all right, he looked bad in that playoff game. You know what? Let's just, we ain't going to do nothing for him. We, we're just going to let this thing play out. Well, we'll get some little guys in there, but we let this thing play out. Nope. 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 Drafted a receiver first round. Then on top of that, they end up adding AJ Byrne. Went and got him young talent along with young talent in their prime. And like, 
Anyway, man, let's keep going. He said, well, we've been doing the same thing since 2018. We could have drafted DJ Moore in 18. We could have forked over the draft capital for Hopkins, for Diggs, Thielen. Uh, we can't get a single receiver for an MVP QB, but Josh Allen before Diggs literally, literally hasn't had a single season over 60% before Diggs showed up. That's dating back to high school. This isn't a knock on Josh Allen. It's a testament to uh, the travesty we have given our QB and called it his receiving court. Let's get to the last draft. There were plenty of receivers in it. A receiver we didn't need until right after announcing our 14th selection, we trade away Hollywood. And with the remaining 10 picks, we decided not to address the position. We got excuses like, well, the Steelers drafted the guy we wanted in front of us. You drafted two tight ends and two corners in the fourth. All kind of draft capital you could have used to trade up. Yes. Trade away for one of the elite receivers that weren't signed before or immediately after the draft like DK, McLaurin, or Debo. I mean, we saw the price it would have been with Hill and Adams. And for the, the ironic part about that is we traded Hollywood for a first. And yet we can't fathom the idea of trading away a first for a receiver ourselves. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Okay. Dang. Uh, that's that pride talking. This offseason, didn't we hear our head coach talk about how he loved his current guys before the draft, only for the team to sign Demarcus Robinson before the second preseason game? Yes. Yes. They they continue to. That's, they, ain't that two years in a row? Yeah, that's two years in a row. Where they come out and say, we love our guys. We love our guys. And then they go out and bring in some other guys. Um, he said, sign Isabella before a month into the season, and now we are hosting Deshaun Jackson. This is negligence when you had the resources and ignorance and pride when you created a void and you failed to fill it and told yourselves what we have is enough. If it was enough, Duve wouldn't play less than 50% of the snaps when Bateman is out. We wouldn't be talking uh, to all these receivers or in trade rumors yet again if it was enough. Yes, we blew three leads because of defense, but we also couldn't score in the second half. It's literally a team effort to lose. Bottom line. It was negligent and prideful to not give your QB competent weapons. It was negligent and prideful to not get rid of Greg Roman, especially when you saw it hindered uh, the job from bringing in receivers and the receivers that you had wanted to leave because of him. And every receiver that has left has verbatim said, it's the system. This organization is failing itself. I'm a Ravens fan. I fell in love with this team as a young boy in Tennessee and seeing the sheer force in purple grace my screen watching the AFC Central rivalry. I was eight. But I have to call it like I see it. We have failed numerous times. And instead of actually attacking the issue like other teams have, whether the results were good or bad, we ignored it. We have a MVP QB. He won the award unanimously. And we can't even get him a top 50 receiver, let alone a top 15. That's negligence. A change needs to happen. OC, head, uh, I was about to say head C. He OC, uh, HC, head coach, GM, something needs to happen to shake the foundation of the severity of what's going to occur because I hate to say it, the writing is on the wall. Lamar will be taking his talents elsewhere because they don't accommodate him. Every receiver he has allocated to play with outside of Hollywood, the Ravens don't even make plays for. I've counted at least five. Uh, Pickens, uh, DK Metcalf, Robbie Anderson, uh, Antonio Brown, Jerry Judy. By season end, we will lose our fan base, our QB, and probably our minds. LOL. Last point, if we sign d Jax, his vet minimum will be more than Robbie Anderson's remaining 2022 salary cap hit. Mm. That was something right there. <laughs> that was something right there. You see, you said a mouthful, but you, you were spot on, man. Well, imagine if they would have traded for Robbie Anderson and still got uh, Deshaun Jackson, too. That, that would be something. But anyway, he said, uh, thanks for your time and patience and reading this. And thank you for, again, for what you do. It's not easy, but you step up to the plate daily. And me and all your other viewers truly appreciate it. Uh, good luck to all your future endeavors and nothing but prosperity for you and the family, man. Have a blessed one. Hey, appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you. And again, everything you said, spot on. Spot on. Um, I agree. Like, it's like, all right. Again, I. We said this before, after 2019, after Lamar Jackson went out there, won an MVP, 36 touchdowns, six interceptions, da, da, da. after he did that, that's when the Ravens for sure should have been like, all right, let's really step it up at the wide receiver, especially because, again, you remember that playoff game in 2019 against the Titans. Who was the one, the one receiver that was killing it? Hollywood. Hollywood was. Everybody else, no. Everybody else dropping this, dropping that. That should have been where the Ravens were like, all right, we got to get, we got this young guy, Hollywood. We got this young guy, but, and, and he's, he's a rookie. He's a rookie and he's shining like this. All right, you know what? Let's go get a proven guy in his prime to match with Hollywood, to pair with Hollywood so Lamar could really have, oh, it could be nice. And he still got Mark Andrews. Oh yeah, let's do it. But no. Purple Tears. Next question came from my guy, Polo King. He said, please help me understand this. Josh Allen gets digs. Joe Burrow gets chased. Patrick Mahomes gets heel and Juju. Baker Mayfield gets OBJ. Dak Prescott gets CeeDee Lamb. Kirk Cousins gets Jefferson. Russell Wilson gets Jerry Judy. Need I continue, but Lamar Jackson 
Uh, he could have had DJ Moore, even Robbie Anderson, but I guess they're too young. So Lamar gets there's Bryant and Deshaun Jackson. Uh, come on, man. No shade towards them, but clearly they are past their prime. If that's the case, let's go completely crazy and sign all the older wide receivers. Call T.O., Chad Johnson, Randy Moss, Jerry Rice. Twitter is killing us, shaking my head. We have become the laughing stock of the NFL. You know what? Hey, Ravens might as well sign all them guys, man. Bring them all out of retirement and go put them on the field. Next question came from King Jamie. He said, hey, what's good, my guy Engraven? I got a quick question about our recent signing of Deshaun Jackson. Do you think that was such a Ravens move? <laughs> yeah, of course. He said, I honestly feel like Jackson will do good with us as a vet receiver. Some of the young guys need someone like that. Uh, kind of remind me of when we had our OG vet, Steve Smith. I believe he still had that dog in him for sure, and he can add speed to the offense and make some plays. I think he can make some plays. I, I do. Comparing him to Steve Smith Sr., I don't. I, I, I can't do that. But I, I think Deshaun Jackson can come in and make some plays, and I hope it works out. I mean, we all, we all hope it works out. We don't hope that, oh, this, this experiment that the Ravens doing fails. But um, a lot of us, will, just myself, I, I just speak for me, we just hope that the Ravens would just do a lot more earlier investing um, at the wide receiver position instead of, oh, man, oh, we lost our number one receiver, so now we got to look for scraps. Next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, Angry Raven has everything going. Hope all is well. Why don't the Ravens want Lamar to over-succeed? Simple, man. It's all about the bank. If they go out and get Lamar top talent all around, then they have to make him part owner of the team because that's what he'll be worth. By keeping fair talent around him, we will keep the price down just a notch. And will make him work harder for it. Ravens could have had two rings with Lamar already, but they just won't put all the pieces around them. Every team does patchwork, but only after they get positions of need. The Ravens just keep patching. Soon, uh, they're going to have to rebuild because contracts will run out from years of patching. And when that happens, we have to start cleaning house and bring in fresh eyes and maybe a new identity. I apologize for the rant, my friend. Peace and blessings. Wow, that was uh, powerful uh, because you talked about patchwork. And when you talk about patchwork, that means that you're not completely fixing uh, whatever the problem is. And what is it going to take for the Ravens to start really fixing the problem? Could it be a new set of eyes like you mentioned? We'll see. Offense regresses over philosophy struggle. Next question came uh, from Keanu. He said, what's going on in Raven? Hope you and the fam are doing great today. I wanted to get your input on this topic. For the first three weeks, we had no existence of a running game. Lamar was lighting it up through the air, and our offense was number one in a multitude of different statistical categories. Weeks four, five, and six, with Dobbins progressively getting healthier, it seems as if the Ravens went back to their old ways. Predictable run on first down, unreasonable runs on second down like that second and 15 during this Giants game. It seems the team has taken a huge step back trying to revert to their past 2019 sales. I believe that's the reason Lamar was killing it through the air those first three games was because he was consistently throwing like Allen Mahomes do every game. Constant rhythm, which helps him stay hot and on target. Right now, he's back to throwing at a very minimum rate, which uh, with more emphasis on efficiency rather than volume. Mm. Uh, yeah. Allen continues to light it up because he has the support from his coaches to do so. Lamar doesn't. I'm getting tired of this Ravens old philosophy. Every team has progressed into a past featured offense except us. It's truly frustrating as a Ravens fan. Just wanted your two cents. Stay blessed. And yeah, the um, with the the way that the Ravens do the passing game, everything it counts that much more. So it's like since the Ravens are not passing, especially as much as they were early on in the season, they're not having as much success with it either. It's like when you don't have as much success with it, it it looks that much worse. It looks that much worse, and you got to be like perfect. Um, because if you're not perfect, it's going to get highlighted that much more. And it's going to have that much more of a negative impact on the game since the volume is so low. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, good evening, Graven. We fumbled again. I hope you and the family are doing well. How did we let Arizona Cardinals acquire Robbie Anderson? I'm sure at a discount price and not pounce on that steal for another deep threat. I'm convinced they don't want to improve the wide receiver depth. Well, with uh, Robbie Anderson, initially... When it first came out that uh, that he was being shopped, I was thinking, oh, yeah, Ravens going to be all over that. But then during the game, uh, when they showed him going back and forth as the coach, he got kicked off. I said, oh, yeah, Ravens, they not going to be on that at all. Why are we so cheap? Next question came from my guy, OMG. He said, hey, Raven, hope you and the family are doing well. I've been silently listening in the background, frustrated, just like all the Ravens fans in the Team Keep It Clean community during this season. After seeing the Deshaun Jackson signing, I couldn't believe it, and I have lost all my patience and had to ask you this question. Why are the Ravens so cheap to get that true number one wide receiver? Well, because it costs money and it's a position that they don't value like that, straight up. He said, I feel like this Ravens organization is letting Lamar Jackson down and not surrounding him with enough talent to help him get to the promised land. How can we change this organization's philosophy to show that it's time to give up those draft picks that have been mostly useless in getting that immediate playmaker and dogs and get the proven, the proven now players? I'm so sick and tired of it. Sorry for the rant. Uh, and just like I wouldn't blame Lamar to say to the Ravens after the season, I'm out. Mm. But yeah, it's... It's just, it's just a philosophy, man. It's, it's how they view the position. 
And I, I think since they've had uh, they've had seasons, obviously the first Super Bowl, uh, they got to get by without receiver like that, like really, really invested. Then the second Super Bowl, they actually invested in receiver. They had a proven guy, and they had a young guy, and then they had a guy who was young as well, uh, but he was a playmaker. Wasn't the best receiver, but was a playmaker at receiver and uh, obviously in the return game, which definitely was uh, a big specialty of his. Um, so it's it's like you can't get away from it. You can try to get away from with making that real uh, effort at receiver, but it's, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt as it has. Conspiracy theory. Next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, "Hey, Raven, I hope all is well with you." After watching your Deshaun Jackson video and you bringing up the point that Ravens lack weapons at wide receiver, I'm starting to get a nagging feeling that the lack of weapons uh, for Lamar is intentional. The way the front office is driving his price down, since the lack of talent will ultimately lead to a lack of production. I wouldn't put it past the front office to do this, since this is a business. Shaking my head. I do hope that I'm absolutely reaching, and that's not the case, and that the Ravens give Lamar the most lucrative deal possible at the end of the day. Hey. I I would I would love for you to be wrong, but like you mentioned, it's business, baby, and it's a nasty business in the NFL, my friend, as you already know. Next question came from Oreo Cookie. He said, hey, Graven, I'm just disappointed, but we are still tied for first in the division. Do we deserve to be? I mean, <laughs> like, they're three and three, but uh, what, the, the Bengals are three and three? The Browns and the Steelers, they got worse records than that, so I, by default, I guess, but... Anyway, uh, he said, what is your updated record prediction for the season? Honestly, I see us going either near 500 or on under, honestly. Oh, and I would not expect for us to win. Uh, you would just get disappointed. <laughs> oh, man, with them sitting at 3-3 three and three right now, um, what did I say before the season? I think I said 12-5 uh, and five or uh, ele- uh, did I say 12-5 and five or like 11-6 and six around there. I could still see that, but... It would take a lot for them to even get there, though. Because if they went 12-5, and five, that would be them only losing two more games. Two more games the whole season? And the, that the way they've been playing? Now, I know they can they could get it turned around now. It's possible. But it's also possible that we see a lot of the same stuff, too. Um, so I'll go right now. I, oof. I'll go 11-6. and six. I'll go 11-6 and six right now, man. Because that'll still be tough now. Ooh, that, ooh especially these Ravens that we've been seeing. But um, that would, that would take a dramatic turnaround. But it's possible, I guess, right? Next question came from Jarvo. He said, why didn't we make a move for Denzel Mims? He's 6'4 with great speed who needs a fresh start. And by the way, he's only 24. Pretty sure we can get him for a fourth or fifth round. I know the organization doesn't care, but they're losing fans. Uh, and if no Lamar extension, better investment in our offense, the Ravens will lose even more fans. Uh, I'm fine with drafting receivers, but we got to stop getting these AARP receivers. I'm fine with Duvidal. Duv- Duv- and Bates and receivers in this upcoming draft, but it's definitely time for change. Um, I mean, they get Kendrick Moore. I mean, I about to say Kendrick Moore. Uh, they get Denzel Mims. Sorry, a Kendrick Bourne thing just came across my phone. Uh, if they got Denzel Mims, um, young guy, uh, but he's not proven. So it would be up to the Ravens to develop him. So I just, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want them to get somebody that's got to be developed now. Because it's, it's time now. I want them to get somebody who's young, and prime, and proven. Just like that. Not JPP, but YPP. Young, prime, and proven. And the last question on this episode came from my guy D3. He said, soft serve. Good day, engraving the team. Keep it clean. Hope all is well with you and the family. I have a few quick questions for you and the crew. Do you believe that the change in the Ravens' practice habits due to the injuries last year may have made them soft or below the historic standards of the Ravens of the past? I know that we all suffer from the traumatic injuries of last year, but the cliche, the way you practice is the way you play, still applies. Lack of discipline, as stated in your previous videos, plural, uh, is also an issue. Where is the killer instinct on offense and defense that keeps them from closing out games? Do we need to see more players upset and passionate on the sidelines to light a fire under the other players and the coaches? What is your take on this? P.S. I'm still a little aggravated that we signed Deshaun Jackson and haven't pursued a young wolf like Jerry Judy, who is disgruntled in Denver and has a history of training with Lamar. He's also an Alabama guy, and we know how Ozzy loves them. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Take care and stay safe. And he's also from Florida. But anyway, um... As far as uh, has the way that they practice made them soft, um, wow, that's a really, really good question. Because, you know, the, the rule changes. They change a lot of what you can and can't do in practice. And, you know, Harbaugh, Harbaugh done been fine for that plenty of times. Um, mm, that could be something. But why, like, 
obviously we 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 focus extra on the Ravens. Um, but with other teams, like it's a lot of other teams that it hasn't made soft. But why would it just be the Ravens? But um, I think it goes to the second part of your question, really, um, because you talked about the killer instinct. Um, you talked about the uh, do we need to see more players upset or passionate on the sideline to light a fire under the other players? I was just talking to somebody yesterday, and they were like, "Man." Um, my, I, I kind of miss Mark Ingram uh, on the Ravens. And I was like, man, yeah, I, I said the same thing. Because somebody like him, how he was, he was the hype man. He was the, uh, the, the, the big positive influence. Uh, he was the spokesperson. He would put it all out there verbally and, and on the field too. And I know 2020 wasn't pretty for, uh, for Mark Ingram. And then they ended up cutting him. But um, he, he was that guy for that. And with, with, with Mark Ingram, um, I didn't appreciate what he did for the Ravens as much as I should have. And I didn't, I didn't appreciate it as much after he left until I saw what the team was when he left. And I saw how they just, they didn't really look like they were having that much fun, man. And they just looked like they were just getting by, getting through it and whatnot. And I know they started facing a bunch of injuries and whatnot in 2021, but... They just seem different. But, like, you look at 2019, how he was, and even in 2020, just his vibe, uh, it was big. And then uh, it just reminds me how me, I didn't I didn't appreciate leadership as much as – I didn't realize just how important it was until the year after Ray Lewis left. Because I just always taken it for granted. Like, because was just so used to Ray Lewis being there, so used to Air Reed being there, was so used to them guys just being there that after they were gone – and it's like the team got quiet and they got kind of timid and, and they seemed like kind of lost a little bit. I know Ter- Terrell Suggs was still there, but it just it wasn't the same. The team just seemed like they, they, they lacked a bit of direction. So having guys like that, having guys that are passionate like that, it helps a lot on offense and defense. That's why we love Marcus Peters a lot because he brings that, man. He brings that energy. He brings that passion. Um, but I, I think the Ravens are missing more guys like that. Yeah, this feels like a dream.